What's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to uh, turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. Uh, we have a very, very special guest today, my own personal business mentor, Frank Klesitz of Viral Marketing. He is the founder. We're going to talk all about database marketing, why you should be forming real, actual relationships with hu real human <laughs> beings that happen to own houses. They're called homeowners. Uh, we're going to talk about why you should have relationships with them first and not just go after uh, random crappy buyer leads. And I'm sure Frank might have some stronger language uh, to share about buyer leads, or maybe Greg will beat him to it first, but uh, there's a lot of other things we can call them. But anyway, speaking of Greg, the junior grandmaster himself, we'll, we'll see if I can uh, corral him today if I continue to earn my designation as a certified Greg Wrangler. What is up, Greg? <laughs> What's up, Matt? Dude, I love having Frank on. When I came on, uh, you two were deep in a discussion on hiring and firing and all the interesting intricate you know, parts of that side of the business. I mean, immediately checked out of that conversation going, ooh, systems? Ugh. I'll let them two have, have that conversation. I gotta go do something fun. But uh, dude, it's gonna be great to have Frank on. There is, this man is just an absolute wealth of knowledge you guys are gonna be able to learn from. So get your handy dandy prehistoric writing utensil called a pen out and use a piece of paper and start writing down some tips. Also, you know, Matt, I, I was I was talking to my buddy Brian, who's my notary, and um, he was he he rode the 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 real estate you know roller coaster straight into the ground like all of us did back in 2008, or most of us did. And uh, he was mentioning something that he's noticing something coming back around that has not been out for a while. It's the, called the Real Estate Wealth Expo. It has like Tony Robbins, Pitbull, you know, all these different you know celebrities on TV coming back out. And he made a prediction, and I want to see what kind of what our, our viewers think and what you think. Is that, that the fact that because our market is so saturated and so high right now, right, in values, and everyone's like, oh, there are new, you can flip homes, you can remodel homes, you can use hard money loans, you can do all this other shit. Where the, I think I think the shift is starting again because this is exactly what took place in 2006 and 2007, right before the crash. Stupid money got into the into the game of remodeling and flipping, and then they're going to get caught with their pants down and get burned. So think about that. I'd like to see kind of both what your thoughts, both of you guys' thoughts are on that because if it is. Then we have, you know, here's the precursor of a potential down market coming our direction, which is, I don't know how that, how it's going to work out. People, people are saving their fucking money this time. For the love of God, do not go out and buy the brand new Bentley. No, <laughs> your one bedroom apartment does not suffice as your mansion if you drive around your two hundred thousand dollar Bentley. Right, right. All right, let's we'll <laughs> bring Frank in. We'll get his opinion on that. Frank Closet, what's up, man? Thanks for having me. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So. uh so for those that don't know, obviously you are my um, my my mentor. I came out to work with you here in San Diego and then sprung off on, on my own and stuff like that. But we still uh, obviously keep very much in touch. Greg is a, a client, a longtime client, which is how we <clears> met. <throat> to bring, just for those that don't know, since we've got a lot of viewers who are either new to the business and some even that aren't in the business yet at all, give us an idea of what viral marketing is, and then we'll get into kind of the uh, the big picture stuff about the economy and all that good stuff. Yeah. Well, the uh, the company started out of my own need. I needed a way to stay in touch with my database. I wanted to get into real estate uh, right out of college, and um, I was told to go out and pick a niche neighborhood of town. This is before all the buyer leads and Zillow and Truly and online lead generation. It was just pretty simple. You went out and picked a neighborhood. You would knock on doors, make calls, do open houses, and the people you talked to probably didn't want to sell their home that day. So you wanted to get their contact information to stay in touch, and I just needed a way to stay in touch that would uh, – Positioned me as an expert and not so much as kind of a, you know, your typical real estate agent. I was really young at the time. How was I going to break into higher price listings? And I decided just to put myself on video, start making two educational Q&A videos a month. Anyways, the process to do that uh, was very time intensive. It was simple, but time intensive. You have to edit the video. You have to mm. post it online. You have to send out the email. You have to do all these things. So instead of, uh, I started doing it for the agent I was going to work for on her team. And, um, and uh, one thing led to another, and I realized there may be a business to help um, real estate agents and professionals basically interview you on a webcam and then edit and promote and send that video out to your database to stay in touch. And that's what viral marketing is today. Close to you, know, I get, you know, that's exactly what my, when, I, when I found you guys. I had been searching for something like that, you know, for so freaking long. And, I, and Frank, I don't know if you know this part of the story, but when I first got on to, uh, to using you guys and I found out what your startup fee was, I'm like, <laughs> go fuck yourself. You, you want me to give you this much money without anything? Yeah, right. And they're like, okay, well, give us your database. We'll send that we'll email out. I'm like, uh, whatever. You're going to fall on your face and I get a free email. Sure. Dude, 
I was like a 33% open rate on my first email out. And I had people calling me about, hey, man, it's so great to see in touch with you. I'm like, do you want the black card or the American Express? Which one would you prefer? <laughs> you know, I, I love doing that, by the way. Um, that's so called fun. that's called reconnecting with your existing database. We pulled all your mm -hmm. Gmail contacts. We pulled mm -hmm. your LinkedIn contacts. Uh, you can even get the, your Facebook friend emails. There's a way to get that through a Yahoo mm -hmm. address book. Mm -hmm. uh, we took all the emails from your uh, CRM. And we loaded them all up, uh, we cleaned them up, and uh, we basically sent them a very simple, plain text, humble reconnect yeah. message, letting, letting, them know, letting them know that you're no longer a secret agent, <laughs> and you want to let people know that you're there to communicate with them and help them, and that's how we started that off. Yeah, it was awesome. I honestly, there's a few people and companies that I've I've thrown that, you know, kind of been like, yeah, right, you can't do it. But then, like, you and one other company have been able to blow my mind on the return that I get for my money. Thanks, man. I'm, I mean, this is not a handy for you, but this is the truth for all you guys who don't know viral. Dude, my coach, Reed, is epic. He comes up with great content. He makes sure that everything is on time, runs smoothly. They get amazing videos out. It's professionally done. My clients, my my my, my people around the office, they refer to me as the professor. They're like, hey, professor, got your last video. I'm like, I didn't graduate college, but okay, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great. Absolutely great stuff, man. And you guys have really helped us stay in contact with our clients. And we're going to be talking about getting a little more commissions out of out of um, yeah. you know our clients today. And it is true, man. I've gotten direct messages going, hey, look, I'm looking to buy a couple of investment properties because of your videos. I'm definitely going to be calling you. So just stay put. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So yeah. just good well, stuff. Let's talk about the you, you briefly alluded to the whole kind of buyer lead generation and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. Give, give us an idea of kind of what's going on out there in the landscape, because that's what we hear all about is there's nothing but Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, uh, Boomtown Commissions, Inc. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all buyer leads. Yep, it all, it all works, but mm. uh, the pie is thinning. Mm. You know, so we have a, you know, like I said, my story back in 2008, 2007, when I wanted to get into the business, what, 10 years ago, um, it was very simple. It was just go out to homeowners, you meet homeowners, you get listings, and the buyers come from your signs. Maybe they come from your newspaper that you run the, the listing in, right? Newspaper. And <laughs> yeah. nobody, right? nobody I mean, watching at the, the age of 28 understood that last sentence. <laughs> right? Had all the, had all the homes in it. Right? <laughs> you know, right. So what happened was is it's so been so funny. I've seen real estate fads come and go, and you know how we take the direction of our company the past 10 years. And probably the one thing I've just seen just explode, and this isn't with all industries, by the way, is marketing automation and software and uh, internet lead generation. Like how can I get buyers and sellers to contact me online, you know, cold. And that certainly still works. But what you're having is, you know, home ownership rates are declining in America, right? Most mm -hmm. people are buying homes, right? Um, we're probably at the peak of that probably happening given past trends mm -hmm. of homes, right? Mm -hmm. So we have less, we have that going down, right? Especially with the business cycle and long-term cycles, but online registrations for leads are going through the roof. So you have homes going down, you have online registrations going through the roof. So you have these buyer leads opting on like five different sites because they want to make sure they see all the houses. You know, that lead gets rotated to five different people, um, you know, and in certain markets, uh, especially in some of the markets that you're in, Greg, you know, if you're going after a very, you know, um, educated, you know, affluent market, you know, they're not necessarily going to type in their phone number to save their passwords for how you capture the phone number online. Does that make sense? No, yeah. So depending upon the market that you're in, it becomes more and more difficult, more and more people are chasing them. And honestly, you know, one of the things that will never die, especially with all the automation with uh, real estate and everyone trying to replace the real estate agent and put it in the cloud or whatever it is, all this talk that's been around. The one thing that will give you your competitive advantage as a real estate agent is the relationship you have with homeowners in a local community. End of story. <laughs> the relationship you have with homeowners – in a local community is what's going to give you that long-term competitive advantage. And um, that's what we focus on here at Viral. It's all about getting listings. It's all about marketing you as a local economist of choice as far as what's going on with the market, about getting you on video and communicating with a list of homeowners. And you have to do that by building your database. That's what I want to talk about today is how do you actually go about reconnecting with your existing database of past clients, centers of influence, um, the people you bought, bought or sold a home with, the people that you know. What about all the people you've been calling or door knocking that said, yeah, you don't want to stay in touch. I might want to sell in a year or two. What are you doing to stay in touch with those people when you just can't do it all the time by phone? Because there's only so much, so many hours in a day, right? Mm. What are we doing to stay in touch with those people? And then what are we doing to prioritize follow-up? I, I just want to kind of share with the audience today, like 
just that whole plan, if you're going, you know what, maybe I really do need to focus more on listings as opposed to so much internet buyer leads. Maybe I really need to focus on getting, you know, building relationships with local homeowners in the community. And that's a good complement and a foundation. I'm not saying the internet lead generation is is bad in any way. It's just that it's it, it's obviously getting more competitive. I think we can all agree on that and more expensive, yeah. right? So you could choose to play that game at a high level, or you could say, you know what, I'm going to focus on uh, niche local communities, positioning myself as an expert, and um, that's what we can talk about today. Well, let's, uh, yeah, real quick, define define what you mean by database, because that, that can mean a lot yeah. of different things to a lot of different <laughs> people, and that's kind of changed. We were talking about yeah. this the other day, that that in itself has changed definitions over the years just since you started the company. Yeah, so when we started viral marketing, it was all about staying in touch with the database back in 2009, let's say. It's like, okay, database means for most people, uh, your past clients, the people that you bought and sold homes with, they may want to hire you again or refer you. It means your centers of influence, maybe 50, 100, 150 people. You know, so you're talking about what, a center of influence of 100, 150 people. You're talking past clients. I don't know. You're lucky to have what, 50, 100, and that's high, right? Mm -hmm. You know, then you have all the homeowners that you've been talking to, people that might want to buy or sell a home. Maybe there's 100, 200 people on that list. I mean, the total database size is what, 500 people? That's pretty good size for like mm -hmm. a real database. <laughs> and that's what – Oh, yeah, I was going to say, exactly. People that you've actually met and that know yeah. you and like you and would, and that, would, would and recognize that's what, you in the grocery store. Yeah, and that's what a database is. Yeah. Now, that changed with all the online lead generation, lead registration. So now mm -hmm. it's all these leads coming in, and now the database goes from 500 to 600 to 7,000 to 2,000 to 5,000, 10,000, 20,000. Frank, I have 50,000 emails in my database. What am I doing to stay in touch, right? So, yes, there is an element of yes. Do you want to communicate with anybody who opt-ins and registers with you? Of course. And, yes, you want to have build a big list. But the point is we lose focus of building and maintaining relationships with homeowners. I keep, I'm going to keep saying that over and over again. With right. homeowners <laughs> for listings, because you got to be a homeowner to list your home, yeah. right? With homeowners for listings, we tend to kind of lose that when we expand database to being like huge email list where I like to focus on your database as being just your past clients, your centers of influence, and homeowners, mm -hmm. as well as maybe even buyer leads that have a home they would need to sell before they could buy, sure. which would be a homeowner. Sorry. So yeah, homeowners. Sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> It'd just be a different way of homeowners coming into your world, yeah. Correct. Well, and, and that's and that's the thing, and I, I've I've said it on the on the show before, so people maybe you know maybe I'm repeating myself, but to me that there's there's this huge difference. There's this kind of contrasting world between the sales mentality and a consulting mentality when it comes to real estate and just any kind of sales. So you have the the sales mentality, which is to go out to kind of the world at large. That you just immediately go out to the world of people that don't know who you are. You try to find that little slice of people that have a need. And then you try to convince those people who have never heard of you, but they have the need for what you sell to build trust and close them all within a very short period of time. That's what that's what real estate has been taught since, you know, well, before the 70s. But let's let's put it this way. It's been pounded into the real estate industry since the 70s. Now we're coming into an age where it's much better. We're realizing it's much better to go to a circle of people that already know you and like you and trust you, but they don't have the need yet for what you sell build the relationship and then when they have the need sure, you're yeah. the natural person to come up it's just it's it's literally it flips the entire thing on its head it's not just a different tactic it's not just a different kind of bolt on like this is an entirely different philosophy yes it is a different philosophy it's about i well i don't I don't know if it's really a different philosophy it's just a minor philosophy i mean gary keller wrote in the millionaire real estate agent you have the people that you haven't met in your target market and your job is to go out there and bring them closer and closer and closer to you Mm -hmm. Right. It's just that we kind of lose focus when we do so much online stuff. We're just dealing with all these strangers all the time all over the city and there's no really focus in the business. Yeah. Whereas, you know, I'm very fortunate. I live in Coronado. I live on a little little island outside San Diego, maybe four or five thousand homes here. And, you know, one Facebook ad would be putting videos on it. I could be in the news feeds of all these people to build relationships with them. You know, I can run through calling everyone, updating pretty closely. Like if I really focused on this island, I can you know, I could really position myself as an expert because there's focus, which is different if I was going to say, okay, I want to be the agent entire San Diego County. You know, you're all over the place. Now, yeah, yes, yeah. you might get more one-off deals, but you're sacrificing the later business of that brand where people come to you and you build a relationship with the homeowners mm -hmm. for just getting kind of one-off deals around the place. And honestly, the answer is if you're broke and you have nothing to start with, you got to focus on both.
you need the business from everywhere, the expired listings all over the county, but you really want to pick one area that you can you can um, dominate. I'm going to share a couple of those strategies today. Yeah, and Greg, you, you're very good at this. I mean, it's it's taken you a while, but I mean, you you started off focusing like a laser on just the areas that you wanted to work with right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's where we're still doing that. We're having to expand because our team is expanding. Mm -hmm. So we're we're looking at it strategically. We're looking at the prices. We're looking at the dominant agents. We're looking at you know what what our turnover rates are in different areas. What kind of product is moving in different territories? And then you then we go after that. I'm just starting to play around with Facebook ads. Got a lot of good responses and video views. Didn't get anything out of it the round one of Dunham. But just like what Frank was talking about, going and hitting a hyper local area. But Coronado, let's be, let's not fuck around here, dude. You sell one of those homes. Most agents would like n just be like. Ugh. Yeah, but the, homes, the, the problem is the homes have to move. There's not a lot of them move over yeah. here. Mm. No, you, you have, you have multi-millionaires and uh, Navy SEALs is pretty much your makeup of Coronado. Yeah, well, that's, and that's the thing that goes back to my story back in Omaha. It's like how in the world would I compete with all these entrenched agents that have been here for 30 years selling houses and I break in new? Mm -hmm. you know? So I have to have some strategy to position myself as the local expert and authority when I don't have signs in the yard everywhere. Mm -hmm. you know. And now we have now we now we have Facebook that can do that for you. You can you can be you can be shown as a dominant agent. I mean, I ran two videos last week. One was national for just kind of playing around with videos for me. It was point zero zero four cents, just like four, a fraction of a cent every time the video is viewed. But then when I did a local one, it was two, one to two cents per video view uh, of my new team member Midori. And so it's it's the cost is ridiculously effective if you can be persistent and consistent and dominate a market area. Because if you start eating up, eating up people's headspace, then all of a sudden you become the dominant player in the field. Which, Frank, I don't know what has been wrong with me for the last two, three years I've been working with you. Um, I've never just never dawned on me until the other day. I'm like, oh, what do I have all these great, wonderful videos? What should I do with them? Just not amount to my database? No dipshit. You should be putting five bucks behind it every single time they come out and run on them for two damn weeks out into your yeah. local market area. Well, actually, let me <laughs> let me jump in on that. Let me just <laughs> let me talk about Facebook advertising really quick. Uh, we've run a lot of different Facebook ads, and I would say, by far, without question, and it's actually something we do now at Viral Marketing. So if I have any viral clients, you too, Greg, listening, this mm -hmm. is included in your fee at no charge. Oh. So we will set up a remarketing ad, remarketing your website traffic. It's not rocket yeah. science. Yeah. But when somebody visits your website, when they come in from pay per click or they come in online, you know, you want to be following those people around with a direct offer to call you. Meaning, here's the video that should show up. Hey, I'm Greg McDaniel. Reason you're getting this is that Facebook thinks that you might be looking to buy or sell a home. If that's the case, I'm a very responsive agent. I will call you back quickly. I will message you back quickly. If you need to buy a home, we want to be let in to see it. I will be more responsive than anyone else to get you into the home. As well as you need to sell your home, I will basically give you a free appraisal. I don't know if you can say that, but a free appraisal will tell you exactly what we'll sell for on the street if we're listed today. If you're interested, call me right now, message me, text me, email me. I don't care. I'm available. You're Greg McDaniel. Hmm. It, if you put uh, that message in front of your website traffic that's been visiting your website, you'll get leads. We had a client uh, a little while back, Marty Gum. You can actually Google Marty Gum, M A R T Y G U M viral, V Y R A L. There's a blog post I wrote, 150 bucks, it got 30 solid leads. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> yeah, I would say of all of the ads, because there's search, there's intent there, they're at your website, right? Versus just mm -hmm. people who live in yeah. an area. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. So right. I would say that's the number one ad I would do. I'm in. Done. Cool. I'm going to get on it with uh, Reed ASAP. All right, so let's get back into the content. A lot of people struggle with this, and, and Frank, I know you've had you've had to solve this for yourself and a lot of other people, mm -hmm. and kind of lead hundreds of people that all need this suggestion. But uh, yeah, Greg. Hey, our, just a quick housekeeping tip: What mic are you running off of? You, you're coming across hollow. Are you running off a good mic? Just right, just double checking with you. You. Me. Matt uh, We will double check. Just making sure you're running off a good mic. Is one of the Should be. Yeah, should run off the good mic. Okay. Do I sound better with this mic? Yes. <laughs> I use this mic. Does that sound, guys? Now I'm a cool I'm podcaster. Right <laughs> oh, my God. All right, so quick, quick, quick question. Since we got diverted, Paul Franklin has a good question. What's the most effective engagement on Facebook? And I think he means call to action. Is it call? Is it call me? Is it All click of them. here? All or of them. comment? All of them? Every single one. Okay. So you have to understand, if you actually Google that Marty Gum ad, Mm -hmm. uh, and you check it out up on our post, um, you'll see that I say, email me, call me at this number. You could message me here. You could text me. Whatever is easiest for you, you can reach out to me. 
Gotcha. Now the challenge with that is you'll get more leads, but it's not as easily trackable. So mm-hmm. when I asked Marty how his business came in, he's like, yeah, I guess people call me here and there. And Facebook message came in and I know it came from the ad. I didn't know until maybe I asked them, but he saw a giant spike from it. But I don't want to get too distracted on Facebook ads. Yes, video, video does help. And your highest quality leads are not going to come from, you know, uh, register to save your searches online or type in your what your home is worth. Your highest quality leads are going to be, hey, I want to talk to this agent to buy or sell a home. And you want to run that to a warm audience, which the people watching, visiting your website, that's going to give you your high, that's going to get you your highest quality internet leads. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I like the, yeah. I like the idea of having people back to database. These are people that um, they're essentially either already in your database, either you've uploaded them as a, yeah. as a custom audience, or in this case, they've visited your website first. So they already know, like, and trust you in some form or fashion. Or they, they, they just, they just, them. they have some recent interest in buying or selling a home. I mean, Let's mm-hmm. run the ad in front of those people. What's nice, not to go down a Facebook rabbit hole, but mm-hmm. five bucks a day will get you in front of that audience, and you never have to change the ad because the audience turns over because it's a new remarketing list every 30 days. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So you leave the ad up, and you never have to change it. Yeah, because yeah. it's a different audience because new people are visiting your website. Okay. How many people are generally on that list? I mean, I'm sure people have bigger you know, Really couple small. hundred, maybe a thousand, two thousand. That's why mm. it's a very niche list. It doesn't cost very much, but it's very valuable to be in front of. That was worth the price of admission right there, guys. I mean, you don't have bigger is not always better. You know, in that case, you know, smaller but but more condensed, a cleaner yeah. list that will give you that will respond to you. That's more valuable than you know getting a you know Trizillo's ten thousand leads that you no know, they just don't give a flying shit about you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's get back to uh, to content for a second because a lot of people struggle with what they should say, whether it's videos, whether it's emails, bomb bomb, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like anytime anybody has to say anything about real estate at all, um, their mind goes blank and they just have no idea what to do. So, what are some of the things that you recommend, and uh, uh, what can what can people do to just kind of generate ideas for what to talk about? Well, that's easy. Let me yeah. uh, let me show you a little tip here. May I share my screen? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen with the audience here. Can you guys see my screen? Not my whole screen. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's close down some of those tabs. <laughs> well, it's just too big to see it that way. Can you guys see my Chrome? Uh, is, see it my whole screen? is it my whole it's screen? A little bit of yeah. yeah, still sharing my screen. Well, whatever. Here you go. This is going to be really big, so <laughs> okay. if, you're gonna have to, if you're watching this, you want to maximize the video. Does that sound good? Yeah. All right. So let's type in youtube.com. Here's the first thing I would do. Let's find out what people are searching for. Sound good? I'm going to yes, go sir. up here and I'm going to type in I'm going to type in selling my home. They want to know selling my home myself or selling my home to buy another. There's two video topics. Because you look at the you look at the YouTube search suggestions that's what people type in. Let's type in getting a loan, getting a home loan with bad credit. Uh, people want to know how to get a home loan with bad credit. There's a video topic. Let's type in, I don't know, a real estate agent. They want to know maybe, well, these are all for the job of being a real estate agent. Let's type in real estate market. Real estate market analysis, real estate market update. What's going, you know, is the is the Bay Area real estate market going to crash, right? God, I hope not. But, but do you see how what I'm doing here is I'm just typing in words, and this is what people type into YouTube? And it's, it literally will tell you what people are searching for to create what those video topics should be, right? Let's just type in buying a home, right? Just for buying a home for the first time, buying a home with bad credit, buying a home in California, maybe how that's different than the rest of the country, right? Like uh, Melarus mm-hmm. Mel, Mel tax or whatever it's called, uh, buying a home without a realtor. These are great video topics that you can use just by typing in a phrase into YouTube and seeing what shows up. Let me give you another tip. If you go to answerthepublic.com, this is a search engine that you can ask the seeker. This gentleman is the seeker. And we could find out what questions are people asking about selling my home. So let's type in selling my home. All right. And if I click get questions, this will actually come up with all the questions people are searching for online relative to a specific t- keyword term. And if I scroll down, this might take a little bit to load here. It's going to be really hard to see. Let's see if I can zoom in. Okay. How does selling my home work? How to avoid selling my home to pay for care? How to start selling my home? What do I pay when selling my home? What is the cost of selling my home? What expenses can I deduct when selling my home? 
Good. These are all the questions that people are asking on any topic. I can type in anything into this and it'll give you good ideas. So I'll stop sharing there. What I recommend are three things if you're looking to come up with good topics. One is to listen to what questions people are asking you on the phone when you're prospecting, because those are the most relevant questions that you want to answer in your videos. Uh, and generally, by the way, for your educational videos you post online, Q&A videos work the best. Hey, this is Frank Closet, your local San Diego real estate agent. A question I was asked or a question the client should be asking about them helping them try to them get their home sold is this, and I want to answer that for you today. So answering questions on the phone, seeing what the search suggestions are on YouTube. You can also do the same thing on Google and also answer the public.com and you plan out your topics and that's what you should do. And if you want, you go to our website, and you scroll down and you click real estate at the very bottom. All right, right down here. I have already put together for you the top 24 real estate video topics uh, for this year based upon the highest levels of search traffic that you should publish to get listings. And you can download that's for free. Awesome. This thing is not letting me answer, put a question in, son of a bitch. Cool. So that's, <laughs> the, that's, uh, so that's how I pick public. really good questions yeah. to publish. That's what I would okay. do. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah, and and we've definitely seen. I mean, just for for our our for the show. I mean, we noticed a difference when we started to answer questions. I mean, some of them were directly, some of them were live, some of them were from Facebook groups and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, it's people love even if it's not their question that's being answered. Just the act of answering questions makes it feel more interactive. Uh, whether it's a three minute video that you're emailing out to somebody or whether it's a podcast or a Facebook live, like whatever the case is. I mean, if you're looking for something, we have so many people that ask, you know, what should I put down? You know, we encourage people to do Facebook live and they're like, well, what do I talk about? Like, this is what you do every day. Like you should be, I mean, theoretically, you're talking to clients and potential clients all day, every day. There should be some questions that are coming up that you notice that, that stick out or it's the same questions over and over again. And so it shouldn't be that hard to come up with things. But I think people just psych themselves out so much about what to talk about because they think yeah. it needs to be this momentous, this huge thing. Greg, yeah. you've gotten on me before about it. It's it's usually just keep it simple, ask, answer a couple of questions, and that's usually good enough. Yeah, it's really simple. Don't overthink it, guys. I mean, there's another site I'll put in here called realtytimes.com. Talked about a billion times over. Go and just go get one of these little articles that you like, regurgitate it back out after you've read it, post a link to the actual article, you know, in uh, in the chat with people, and you can make videos very, very quickly with this stuff, and you get smarter in the real estate business at the exact same time. I mean, I'm still fighting with answerthepublic.com because he won't, let, he doesn't like my format, but I think that's a really cool opportunity that I've never heard of that before. Yep. That's a cool little tip. So, um, but I think we should step back a little bit, Matt, is we want to learn how to get more commissions from your database. So before we get into the uh, topics, what we talked about here, I just want to take it back just really quick. And let's just talk about how to reconnect with your existing list real briefly, like that big results that Greg got. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about some of the strategies to actually how to build your database. Okay. Because after you build it, then we get into the communicating with it, right? Which is the video topics. So if you don't mind, let me just go back really quick. So the first thing I would recommend that you do, and this is what we recommend for all of our viral clients, this is what we did with you, Greg, mm -hmm. is you say, you know what, maybe I should do something with my database. It's in all these places. It's not clean. It's it's here. It's there. It's over there. It's your, you know, I mean, maybe you say you don't even have a database. It's not true. Everyone does. You have all your connections on LinkedIn, which you can export. You have all the people in your Gmail contacts you can export. You have even your friends on Facebook that you can get by linking up to a Yahoo address book. You can get the emails of your Facebook friends. Let me say that again. You can get the emails of your Facebook friends to let them know that you're in real estate. Send them an email. Google it. There's ways to do it, at least as far as what I understand. Um, on top of that, you also have also all the people in your CRM, all your past clients, maybe the sellers that your homeowners you're staying in touch with that might want to sell their home. Hmm. Well, you round them all up. You load them into an email marketing program and you write them a very humble, very, very humble reconnect message. And may I give you a script of what anyone that's watching this could use if they round up all those emails, load it into vertical response, constant contact, MailChimp. What's a simple plain text email you could send out to minimize spam complaints? That's something helpful. Let me kind of just go through that script. All right, Matt, is that cool? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. It's real brief. So you can watch this. You can watch the replay on this. I've done this a few times, but here's how this goes. So if we're going to do this with you, Greg, this is what I'd send out. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Go. All right. Subject line would be a personal message. 
Hmm. It would say, dear friends, clients, and colleagues, I'm writing you to let you know that, you know, um, that uh, I'm writing you because you're a friend, a client, a family member, or just a connection of someone that I've known over the years or connected on Facebook. Maybe we've done business together. I wanted to let you know that the real estate market here in the Bay Area is strong. I don't know what the details are, but it's really strong. You know, if you have to list your property or you have to, you know, you have to buy a property, you get great prices, and here's all the details with the market. But really, I also wanted to apologize for not staying in touch like maybe I should have been. There's a lot of changes you're seeing in the, in the country when it comes to home prices in the market. I want to keep you informed about what specifically is happening to home prices here in the Bay Area. And if it's all right, I've made the commitment uh, to inform you with two quick little educational and fun videos every single month that will go out on basically the 1st and the 15th to you about what's going on with local real estate in the community, home improvement ideas, answering buyer and seller questions, and just simple plain market updates. I'd love for you to receive them. I'll put a lot of work into them. But if you don't wish to receive them, I have no intent of spamming you. I know this kind of emails out of the blue. Just click here to unsubscribe. No hard feelings. You'll never hear from me. But with that, if you have any questions you'd like me to answer on my first videos about Bay Area real estate, simply reply to this email. It goes right to me. But if you are, in fact, I am in real estate. If you are, in fact, thinking of buying a home, you can search for all homes for selling my website here. Or you can go to this link here and type in your email, type in your home address to find out what it may be worth. If I can help you buy or sell a home, let me know. I can help you get the best price. Uh, look forward to staying in touch, Greg McDaniel. I loved it. Now. When you write something like that, that's plain text out to your whole list, uh, be ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that, and that's where like, the reconnect message that you sent out for Greg. I mean, you, you, like you Greg, said, Greg, you got like 33% <clears throat> response rate, or like that was the open rate on the email. He got a ton of leads. I mean, I've sent a lot of those emails out myself during my time, and yeah, that's that's pretty typical. And, and you mentioned Frank. Just explain to the people that don't know. What's the difference between a quote plain text email and any uh, other type of email yeah. you might send? Why wouldn't you send so, something that looks professional? Yeah. So what we found is that we like sending uh, professionally branded uh, video emails. If you go to our website, you can actually go to our blog and see examples of different videos our clients send out. I think we publish something like almost 900 videos a month uh, in like video email form that has like a screenshot of the video in there. It has your branding on there. It looks really good for people to remember you. But you only want to send that to a relatively warm list because it is it looks kind of commercial in nature. It's still personal, but you know you don't write a Gmail message in you know Gmail to somebody that looks like that. All right. So what we find is we say, oh, I've been watching your videos and watching your videos and watching your videos. We go back and look at the actual click report of people actually that have actually clicked to watch the video. They weren't on there. And what we find is people say, I watch your videos. I see your videos. They just see the email with a screenshot in it. And that sets you apart because <laughs> it has the trappings of authority. Right. That's the key with that. It just looks like you have the authority versus like maybe them watching your video and finding out, which is really the key with a lot of this stuff. Anyways, to go back to your question, uh, when you first have this list that you pull together of all these people, we don't want to spam them. We let them know that we, they can opt out. We let them know what our intent is. We want it to look like the least amount like spam and the best message to send out that list. No graphics, nothing like that. It should look like a personal email that you wrote in Gmail like size 10 point font, signature, everything, where like they won't even think it came from like an email marketing program. That's just like a little message. And that gets the best results and people can unsubscribe, unsubscribe, and you will get lots of unsubscribes. Some, sometimes with larger lists, you'll have hundreds, but you should be so thankful you got unsubscribed and they didn't click the report spam button. Right. Right. Because yeah, so they, true. They, they click that report spam button, one out of a thousand, you're kicked off, hmm. right? So we have to make sure that we give them the option on subscribe. Every way you set them up for your educational videos, and now you start sending them to a month, which is the cadence that we recommend to stay in touch with your database. Now, is there is there an opportunity? Is there a, uh, a way that you could over? I know you could over touch your database, but I mean, yeah. I mean, it, is three verging four one a week is definitely over touching your database. That's just too much too much noise coming their direction. So, yeah. I mean, if someone was to do like two emails with you, could they do something else on their own that yeah. you would recommend? What would you actually recommend to do that? actually we recommend a, mon a monthly print newsletter? To be honest with you. So you have to remember that, um, you know, your two educational videos a month go out through email, but they also get posted on social media, right? And as of today, not only can we, we remarket those videos on Facebook to your website visitors, but we can also boost them out to your, your, um, your database. You can actually upload your email list to Facebook. 
and Facebook will match those emails with user accounts so you can actually get make sure you get your videos in front of those people. So basically, if you take maybe you put a little money into advertising with it, but the, the point is is that people will see your videos through email and they will see you on social media. That's the point. But the thing is, not everyone actually is on social media all the time. I mean, I own a social media marketing company and I don't even have a cell phone. I got rid of it two years ago because it was bothering me. You got rid of your cell phone? <laughs> two years ago. I don't have one. Dead serious. Oh, uh, now I know. One. Now I know why you and Matt are good buddies. You're like, ah, oh, the outside world. Say it's not true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the intrusion into my life. No, oh, no. my God. So what I, I like know. to do, how I consume content is I sit right here in this nice chair. As you can see, this is my nice relaxing chair. I have my pile of books. I close off to the world, and that's how I consume my content. I don't like consuming it actually here, right? And if there's a video I want to watch, I put it right there on my television. See that? Mm-hmm. Right? So I actually like print. I love print newsletters, and they do work to get in the mailer. So you can actually take an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper, put your videos on it, testimonial, turn into a PDF from your two videos and mail it out saying, here's what was on my blog. And we actually do that for you here at Viral Marketing Upon Request. So I would say two educational videos a month and a monthly print newsletter, as well as promoting on social media seems to be in a general interest profession like real estate, uh, the point of diminishing returns to me. What about because yeah, you're, yeah, you're dealing with people that are, they're not necessarily interested. And that's the difference between like people, if you're in, if you follow kind of the internet marketing crowd and you hear that, no, you got to email people every day. You're talking about a market, a smaller market that is directly opted in for that. You're talking about a, rave, a raving saying. crowd of – Yes, exactly. these are like raving, they're interested in your content all the time, not once every seven years. No, the, homeowner, the homeowners in your city do not want to hear from you that much. They don't care. <laughs> but I would say you know, twice a month is good. Monthly yeah. mailer is good. That's enough to be in front of them. And anything more than that is a little bit overkill. I mean the only uh, time you would do more than that is if you had like a buyer that was really looking at properties. Yeah, you want to update them as much as possible on what new properties are available. But your your buyer lead generation site will take care of that for you. So uh, here's well, a, let's yeah, on, go ahead, Greg. There, on social media on the live side, what I'm what I'm encouraging people to do, and I sure as hell hope I'm not wrong because I really like the idea, um, is to go out and put five bucks behind a new video every week. So you have four new videos about different subject matters out in the out in the uh, on, in the world of you know, social media. You know, so for five bucks a day, my area will touch like twelve to fourteen hundred people a day on five bucks. You know, really low a low, low touch and a low amount of money with a high reach. Is it or is it not a good idea to do a new video every week out on social media to brand yourself as the guy around town uh, and to you know become a resource for you? Is that okay. over? Is that over stimulating the marketplace? Okay. Only because of the opportunity cost you have to think of. Okay, so yes, when I love Gary Gary Vaynerchuk up on stage talking about you need to be on social media every day and you got to be doing social media all the time. I mean, sure, why not? In an abundant world. Why not be on social media all the time? Why not make a thousand calls a day while you're at it and service all your clients and everything else, right? We have to understand that every time that you want to do something, there's the opportunity cost of what you're giving up to do that, right? It depends upon really how you want to grow your business. My answer to that is it's not necessary. However, Facebook Live is incredibly powerful. You'll get a lot of views. You will get a lot of views on it. You love it. You're good at it. I see you driving around with your 360 thing. Right, over the Bay Bridge or something that, like that. That's proof that it works right there because Frank, who's never on social media, actually knows what you do. Yeah, yeah. like what is this? A 360 degree video? What is what's going on here? I actually just came up with a new one. Reed and I came up with an evil scam on a scam, but an evil idea how to put music to 360s, and we're probably going to speed them up so people can pause them and they can look around while listening to music instead of just wind blasts. But yeah, I mean, here, here, here's what I'm getting at. If it's natural and it's comfortable to you to get open up that Facebook Live and talk about it? Absolutely, 100%. Hey, I'm out in the community, let me tell you about this business. Hey, I'm out in the community, there's a traffic jam here so you know. Hey, I'm out in the community, here's what's going on, 100%. But for most people, that takes a lot of focus, it takes a lot of energy, it takes a lot of skill. And for all that work right away to do that, you know, maybe take away from something else. So I'd say yes. What is that? And and because that's, that's the thing is like, a lot of social media posting is done at the expense of picking up the phone and calling. I mean, if there's if there's anything that will sink you well, pretty fast in terms of you know uh, also keeping just, in touch just, with the database, just, just not just picking focus. up the phone. Just focus. I, and I get that. It's just mm-hmm. you know I have this list of things that I got to do. You know, and I just don't know if I can add one more thing on here to be on 
Facebook Live four times a week. So like as you start adding your thing, your stuff of things to do, it's like, okay, like it starts adding up and like that one thing isn't enough, but like it keeps marginally piling on. Mm -hmm. So anyways, my answer to that is yes, absolutely do it if the opportunity cost of your time to focus on that and do it consistently well is not gonna take away from anything else in your life. That's a good answer. I think a lot of people need to understand that. Like the, the, the opportunity cost is something important. A lot of people don't take that into consideration when they're doing their marketing. That's what I love about oh, viral, yeah. you know, whole, the whole you know, package you put together because I show up for an hour. I jabber away to my to read my coach and you know then the back end you guys do all the heavy lifting all I have to do is show up for an hour usually right. he and I get our videos done in about 12 minutes and then he and I just bullshit for the next hour and strategizing um, kind, of like, kind of like how Matt and I met you know we do our videos and then just bullshit for, for a good 20 minutes but I mean it's easy for me to do the social media stuff online so if guys if, this, if that's not easy for you find something else to, to be doing your marketing um, and just you know, if, if you guys want to do video, dude, seriously, if you want, because I think having the the raw live, the gritty behind the scenes, down the trenches is important, but also having the glossed professionally, you know, you know, post, you know, production, you know, type of video is really important as well. There's two different types of people that are looking at two different mediums for that and why people would want to watch each one. Um, but if you don't like either one of those guys, then uh, turn this off and go do whatever you do. Go play with blocks or something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but look, so we have to reconnect with your existing database, guys. We got to mm. send out some type of reconnect email. All right. So once we round up all the connections that we have, we send out this reconnection email of these to this list, right? These are your database. And we just throw everyone in there. We don't have to go through and clean it up. Just grab everything, send the email, and let people self identify who wants to receive your videos. You do not have the right to be the judge of who could get your videos or not. Let them decide. Right. True. That's you should, you should that, print right? out a list of your 2,000 Facebook friends and exhaustively go through and check no. off. And <laughs> first off, that sounds horrible. But who are you to decide who gets your helpful information? <laughs> that is their choice. Oh, that's right? funny. I love it. So, anyways, it's a good mentality to have. The point yeah. is, it's not spamming. It's a helpful message. They can opt out. They'll never hear from you again. It's fine. All right. The next step now is we have to commit to getting email addresses. Now, right. Greg, I had a question for you. Shoot. How many people a week do you speak with about real estate? Uh, pff, hundreds. You know. How doing... much energy and time do you put into that? A fuck ton. And <laughs> okay. I'm exhausted at the end okay. of every week. So you, so you pour your heart and your soul to speak with all these people about real estate, right? Mm -hmm. And of those, let me just ask you this. Of all those conversations, how many probably last more than – Let's just say five minutes. How many of those are good, solid conversations a week, just in general? What do you think? What's the right gut check number for you? Very few. Very, very few. I mean, three out of 10 would be maybe a, a good margin. You know, so you might get maybe what, 15 solid conversations a week? Yeah, that actually means something. It's not just bullshit. And they're not just being Correct. nice to me because I caught them on, okay. the, on a cold call. Got it. So it lasts more than five minutes where it's like, yeah, 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 get off the phone. Or here's my yeah. fake email address, get off the phone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so... So you put how, like your emotional, intellectual, your whole day, your life into getting those 15 names. Greg, do you ask them what is their best contact information to stay in touch? Most of the time, yes. But Good. then there's some of the times I trip and land on my face. And everyone who's watching me doing it live, well, why didn't you ask for the email? I'm like, fuck. I know. God. It, you know? I, 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 and I know it's hard. And I'm just telling you is that. That's a very valuable thing to ma to maximize all that work mm. to get to that quality conversation. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I know. You know. I would be asking for their blood type and their social security <laughs> number. Okay. Your, your right. first child. Yeah. You no, know, but but the point is, is asking for their email address or trying to find them on maybe Facebook or connect with them. I don't know. I don't remember. Kind of weird. But the point is. So, so, yeah, it's kind of weird. <laughs> Never mind that. Do you and, the guy and that just what's your wife's name? Weird. And her Facebook profile? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, she's pretty. Oh, all right. <laughs> Getting weirder and weirder. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> but to get that email address or that or to, to be able to communicate with that person, because once you have the email, you can remarket them. You can yeah. upload that email list to Facebook to remarket. Now you can communicate with email. Now you can send them a personal email for like a little prospect that you want to check in to see how they're doing. There's so much value in that, you know, let alone if you have like, you know, one of the many, I don't know, there's so many good, you know, uh, 
Real Geeks comes to mind. I mean, uh, mm-hmm. you have Real Geeks, Firepoint, Boomtown, Commissions, yeah. Inc. God knows how many there are. You know, if you got their, if they're a homeowner, you got their address, you can send them up on not only the two videos a month, but you can send them up on a monthly update on what home values are in the area that drip out usually from the free home value report software yeah. in one of those systems, right? Yeah. That's yeah. huge. So we, so to really, we have to first reconnect with your email list or your database, but we also have to make the commitment that everyone you speak to, whether it's at an open house, whether it's on the phone talking, meeting people, whether it's any quality conversation with a homeowner, ideally, mm-hmm. in your niche, you know, so instead of just having quality conversations with everyone all over the place, hopefully you're focusing your conversations efforts with homeowners in your niche where you want to go after. That will give you a little more uh, um, focus, mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, but asking for an email address to stay in touch and you write that down, you come back home and you put that into your database or your database is a spreadsheet or your CRM, whatever it is that you're using and making sure those emails end up on your ongoing touch campaigns. It's a habit like exercise that pays off over time doing that. It, it, it is a long, it, that is the long-term play, but a lot of people, the way that reason why they don't do it, one, they're scared shitless that the person's going to reject them and outright, outright just hang up the phone and be like, ah, you're a scammer, boom. Right. Second off, they don't honestly believe that they can get the, the email address and they don't believe they're being of help. Oh my God. We're going to change that right now. Let's role play. <laughs> yes, let's do this. All right. Uh, am I, I'm the homeowner, right? Yes, Greg. Okay. Thank you so much for talking today. It's it's been very I've been very appreciative of your time, and um, I understand you want to sell your 9.7 million dollar home. There's gonna be a lot of agents there competing for it, and let me share with you a few tips of what you can do to get it prepared for sale, and so you can actually sell it for that amount of money. You don't have to take like a 50 percent price discount. Does that sound good? Yeah, yeah my wife will be pumped. She has, she'll have shoe allowance for her life. Okay. I'm yeah, sure. Do this. All right. So here's what I want to do is I publish helpful videos on how to get the highest home sales price. I actually study what's going on here in the Bay Market when it comes to home prices and trends. And I get so many questions from buyers and sellers about what they know about real estate. I publish a local Bay Area real estate video blog. I put a lot of effort in these videos and they're very helpful. It's going to directly affect the price you get when you sell your home. And I like you to receive them so we can kind of get educated in the process. So when it's time to come actually list your property, boom, we put on the market, it sells, and you get the price that we ask for. Does that sound good? Yeah, but how many emails am I getting? Because I can't, I mean, I get, I get so many freaking emails right now, you know? Good. Here's the deal. You can delete every single one if they're not relevant. I'm going to email you twice a month with videos. If you don't like them, reply back to me. I'll take you off immediately. But I'm telling you they're important. And I schedule time every single month to record them for all the people in my database. That's what I call it. But all the people on my VIP list, I want to add you to my VIP list, okay? So you get notified of what's going on in the area. If I just get your email address, your best email address, I promise you I will never abuse it, Greg. What's your best email? Uh, mcdaniel.44 at gmail.com is my best. That's my personal one. It goes right to me. Great. Wonderful. I'm going to send you an email. It has a video for me in it so you know who I am. It has all my contact information plus some resources that you might need to get your home sold. And then I'll stay in touch with you and uh, I'll be following up with you about your home sale. Look forward to it. Guys, there are so many nuggets of goodness in there, different verbiage switches that you did that were outstanding. You went right for the value prop, you know, pr- you know, right off the bat, like, hey, you've got to be listening to this. It's just two emails a month. But then when I said, when I came, came up against you, said I get all these emails, you're like, good, delete everything that's not relevant. Delete everything, that <laughs> delete everything that's not relevant to you, but make sure it's not the case. But do you know how that, honestly, you know how that made me feel? It made me feel safe and protected, like you were listening to what I was saying, because I don't want to be bombarded. You're like, good, good, dump them. And I'm like, Wait, I can. I'm- it's just an email. Delete right. them. I don't care if it's irrelevant, but it probably will be mostly mostly relevant to you. Now, here's the other thing that I said. When you get an email address, you want to have a little email template loaded up in your Gmail. So you can immediately fire off. Nice to meet you. Here's a video of me. Here's my contact information. Here's what you're going to get. So when you're prospecting, you get that email, you should have a template saved as like a canned response or something in your Gmail. Like I just spoke with a seller, put them in my database, load up the template in Gmail, click send, boom. Now, after the phone call, you're fresh in their mind. They get that email. It's probably dinging on their cell phone too. Greg mm. McDaniel, like everyone else except me, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there you are. And now immediately from that conversation, now they can put a face to a name. And now you brought them into your database. That was, that is, damn it. There's a lot of prices worth of mission on, on this on this podcast. I love that one right there. Yeah. That's my favorite one. Well, here's the deal. You're a human squeeze page. You're a human opt-in. What happens when you opt into a squeeze page? You get the confirmation email. Where's the confirmation email, Greg? Oh, human squeeze page. I'm using that. Oh wow, that, is the, that is the, uh, well, it's not quite the most vulgar nickname I've ever heard for Greg, but it's not bad. It's not bad. 
your <laughs> human squeeze form, <laughs> a human opt-in form. Oh, oh, my God. oh my God, that's awesome. Well, yeah, but the, there, there's a bigger point to be made here, which is that, <clears throat> so the, the whole, the whole process here, we started off talking about just buyer leads and how that's, how that's changing. It's, it, it's exploding. And so well, it's changing more... back to basics in terms of the way people grow their database, right? So for a while, we've been living in this little lead generation bubble, essentially for the last seven or eight years where people have believed that they can grow their database by simply going out there, running a bunch of ads that drive pack to a website. To a bunch of strangers. A rant, mm -hmm. To a bunch of strangers yep. who they've never spoken to. Yep. They register on the website and then they're in my database. Now you can, but the ROI, and we can all agree, is becoming less and less. It's more yeah, human yeah. time to follow up. Yes. We're talking anybody to seven other agents. We did with the Tremblay group, did you hear, like, do you remember, anybody remember what their response time was? Like, one minute. Yeah, one or two minutes. Yeah, and, yeah. and you're going to be competing against huge teams, the US, huge ISAs department. They're going to be able to out nurture those leads way to you. Yep. And they're buyer leads. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to be driving you two hours around, you know, for whatever. I mean, what I'm trying to say here is if we focus on listings, mm -hmm. that's the name of the game. And the buyer leads you get from the signs are the highest quality. Yeah. Right? One year does a desire right at that point for something that you have in your back pocket, which is called a listing or access to get people into listings. And that's what people are going to be paying for. And I, I was just having this discussion today. Uh, Eileen, my team manager, the steel trap herself, she and I were like, dude, the phones are just dying, man. Like they, we're having a rough time on, on the phones. And I, and we were talking about doing our database. And I hired another guy named Gene Delpy, who's going to take all the stuff that you guys have put together. He's going to tear it apart and put it in little bite-sized chunks. And he's going to blast it out. He and I got some cool stuff we're going to be launching together. And it's because all the stuff that you guys have helped me develop, now I can take that and build a relationship with people that I already know, like, and trust me, and slowly expand it yeah. from all the different connections that you have. I mean, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think the way that marketing is, is definitely shifting or higher – Higher attention is being paid at a greater level to your interpersonal relationships versus the broadband shotgun approach of just super prospecting out to everybody. It worked in the beginning. It, 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 it worked in the beginning, especially online, when there's not very many people doing it. But as more and more people come on, like I said, the registration is going up, home sales are going down. Someone's going to get squeezed. It may not be you if you have your systems in place, but over time, it's going to be a little more difficult. So you got to make sure that you have a hedge against that. And that's having a presence with homeowners or community. But there's one more thing I do want to share. There's like four steps to how to get more commissions from your database. Let's review really quick. First, we have to round up your database and reconnect with all the people you've been neglecting. All right? Past client sphere, people you know, send out a reconnect message. I kind of alluded to an idea of a script a little bit earlier. Second, you're already putting so much work into meeting people where you should be, right? Let's make sure that we're asking permission to stay in touch. And I kind of gave you a script and an attitude to be able to really get an email address of someone to be able to communicate with them. Mm -hmm. Three, you got to send them something relevant and helpful. Your marketing should be so good that people would pay money to receive it. That's mm -hmm. the world where we're living in today. Attention is so expensive. So create helpful, educational, purposeful videos like we're doing this hangout here. I mean, look at all the views your show guys gets. 10, 20, 30,000 views. Like yeah. that's helpful. It's useful. That's what gets attention. If I go to someone's website where it's like how great they are, why you want to hire me, I don't think there's going to be very many views. <laughs> well, if it was Matt's, he would love it. Look at me. Okay. But here's the deal. After you, <laughs> you record, you know, two quick educational videos a month that go on social media, get published to an iTunes podcast, get emailed to the database, you know, maybe do a little Facebook remarketing with them so the people that visit your website see those videos like we talked about a little bit earlier. We're talking about Facebook. Here's like this real huge kicker. When these emails go to your database, and let's say you have, you know, say 500,000 people in your database of homeowners in the community and past clients and sphere, you send this video out on, let's say the topic is the five things you must absolutely know before you sell your home in April. Mm. Okay. Let's just say that's the topic. Okay. Now, wouldn't you like to know, Greg, the people in your database that watch that? Yes, and I love getting my list. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so the five things you must absolutely know before you sell your Bay Area home in April, watch this video. Mm. Mm. That's, that's, that's good. Hook, line, and sinker. Right. You got me. So you can actually run in your email marketing program who actually watched that video, and then you can call and follow up. Now, if you don't have the email, if you don't have the phone number, you send them an email. 
So the mm -hmm. email, so the phone number and the email crypt is the same thing. The email can be very simple through Gmail. And here's a script. Hey, this is Greg McDaniel. I want to say thank you so much. I see you subscribe to my Bay Area real estate blog. I just sent out a video on some things you might need to know before you sell your home this April. And I'm just calling. I do this as a public service for our community. Is do you have any other questions I can answer for you on my show? Any real estate questions? Mm. And they're like, what? Yeah, I'm great. And then you have to like repeat the whole script because they're totally thrown off by the question. I probably just threw you guys off, right? Oh, yeah? I said, yeah, my name is Greg McDaniel. I see you subscribe to some of the videos I publish on my local Bay Area real estate blog. I'm a local real estate agent here. I just sent out a video about some things you need to sell your home. The only reason we're calling, it's a public service call. I'm just calling the community. I want to be involved in the community. I'm, thank you for answering. I'm sorry for interrupting. I don't mean to be a pest by any way, but I want to create some really helpful videos for the homeowners in our community. I understand that you're one of them, or you may be one of them. Do you have any questions about real estate for me? I'm a local real estate agent here in the area. And I go, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> uh, no, what's this about? Well, I just want to have any questions you want to answer me, because it's literally how it goes. I just want to have any questions I can answer for you, but I guess just to kind of get to the point, do you need any help selling your home? I can help you get your home sold. That's the case. When do you plan on moving? Boom. And now you're into your script. You know what? I want to try that today on my live prospecting. You know, my name is Greg McDaniel. I'm a local agent here in the area with J. Rockcliffe Realtors. I'm calling around as a community service. The market's crazy here, and I just want to see if you have any questions about the market that I could answer for you. Yep, that's oh, it. Yourself. Well, thank you, sir. Yeah, you've been very helpful, and I look forward to helping you sell a home down the road. All right, follow in stock, because I'm going to I'm going to so, win that man over. So. Yes, and you will probably get some of that, but it's less likely to get that yeah. when you're calling the people that are clicking your, clicking the links in your videos. You right? know, and all joking aside, I mean, when I do 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 the calls and emails to the people that are in my database, it's like, oh my God, Greg, what's up, dude? Hey, I saw your last video. Who does that for you? That's a great stuff. I'm like, oh, thanks, man. It's coming up viral. I've been using it for years. Blah blah blah. They're like, dude, I love watching them. And, you, and it's cr crazy, guys. People you never ever ever knew that you had their email address are getting your videos. My my sisters, okay, my sisters, husbands, brothers, wife, follow that train. Okay, I know Matt's brain just exploded. And she's a professor and uh, I saw her at a at a, uh, a family get together last summer. She's like, hey Greg, I love watching all your videos. Whenever I need a break from like grading papers, I, I you know, watch one of your videos. I'm like, how the f do you have one? How many, what, who? She's like, yeah, it's great stuff. I pass it on to all the people I know. I'm like, good. But it's amazing. You're touching people you don't even know that you're touching in a very non-sexual way. But I mean, I want you guys to be understanding that, you know, doing these videos, and I got the second nose pinch from Johnson. This is a great show. <laughs> it took a while. It took you 59 and a half minutes to get the second nose pinch. I know. I'm slipping today, man. I'm slipping. You're, you're not in rare form today. I don't know what your deal is. You forgot your I'm, carrot juice, I guess. I'm freaking I'm boiling in my office. I don't know what's going on. I'm like uncomfortable. I'm just one big like, puddle right. of sweat right now. Oh my God, uh, that's fun. No, this is really good stuff. And we have a lot of, uh, Frank, we got a lot of people. Carla, Haley, Joe, Nick uh, are all saying that they really love this stuff and it's really helpful yeah. for them. So well, they, let, me give, three people. let me give everyone a couple of few resources of what's what I would probably do next, okay? So the first thing I would do is on our website, I wrote what's called, uh, I call it the database reset. It's how to reset your database, but it's actually our official video marketing plan. If you go to getviral.com on the very home page, you can download that video marketing plan. It's a 20 page marketing plan I wrote. It is the exact marketing plan Greg follows. Mm -hmm. If you want that plan, you need to read the marketing plan first. And there it is, it's up on the website, okay? The next thing I would do is I would go to the real estate industry page and download the 24 topics and say, yeah, I think I could probably make some videos on these topics with a little web research, or maybe I hired someone to help coach me through it. Those would be your topics. Right. Also, I talked about a little bit earlier on the show. If you um, Google Marty Gum, he's a real estate agent, Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri, M-A-R-T-Y space G-U-M. Just type in viral after that V-Y-R-A-L. You'll see a blog post about the number one uh, Facebook remarketing ad that has worked consistently for so many people that we've done it for. It's included in the viral feed now, except your ad spend. You just got to pay the ad spend, but it's little, right? It's a small mm -hmm. audience, right, Greg? Mm -hmm. Okay remarketing them with a direct offer to call you to buy or sell a home. Good leads. Okay. <laughs> it's so simple. Call right? me, damn it. <laughs> yeah. Or so message simple. me or email me or whatever it is. Okay. <laughs> and um, then you have the option if there's someone that you want to hire for that, we're available. But honestly, anyone can do it for you. Uh, Viral is one of the choices, but someone will need to help you with the execution. Uh, I wouldn't recommend you do it yourself. You can get tied up in a lot of behind a computer 
you know, uh, not calling, not selling anything, uh, but someone will need to help you with execution. Social media is free. There's no charge for any of this. Everything we talked about is free so far. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. The only the only thing is the opportunity cost of your time. And that's yeah. where um, you can hire someone to help you out with that. That's what we're available to do here at Viral Marketing. So thanks for having me on the show, guys. I appreciate yeah, it. Thank, thank, you. thank you. I mean, good Lord, man. I know we like baby baby scratched the surface of Frank Clement's brain. but uh, Cle- Clessets. 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 I'm going to, I, 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 Frank's brain. I can get that word out. Um, but I mean, just the tips and tricks guys go back and rewatch this video a couple of times. There is so much stuff in here. The little small verbiage changes that Frank put in there can radically transform the mindset of, of your prospects. I mean, like I told you before, Frank just changed a few things. There's some of the scripting he and I did and made me feel very, very comfortable. And he gave you some great tips that are all free. So that, that goes right in line with what the show guys, we'd love you to pieces. We want to see you guys, you know, survive, not just survive, but thrive. In this business, you have every opportunity. You have two of the smartest men sitting across on the other side of this podcast that I've had the opportunity to work with on multiple different facets and levels, you know, and they're here giving free knowledge to you. Please take advantage of it. And I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about Johnson and Frank. No, no, no bullshit. You guys are two of the smartest guys I know. It's awesome. I assumed you were pointing in a mirror, I guess. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> this so we're, we're, talking, <laughs> we're talking a lot about, uh, and we'll wrap up here, but guys, go check out rockstarprospecting.com. In our, in our class earlier today, we were talking about that in terms of how to get emails and uh, and some of the, pro- the, like the scripting changes. And just that whole mentality of calling through an area to build your database, not with the intent of finding that one in a million person that's ready to sell right this second, but with just building up your email database, having those genuine conversations and what that phrasing looks like to get them to agree to give you their email and you finish off the call that way. That should be the goal of the silver prospect. So if you're calling an agent and building an authority, Call them with the intent to get their email and build that relationship. So, uh, guys, go check out rockstarprospecting.com. Make sure to uh, follow us all on Facebook. Follow Greg. Follow me. I am pursuing results across all platforms. Greg, you are Greg McDaniel. And then on Instagram, you are McDanielCallahan.realestate. And Frank is uh, taking some video of the show right now. So, guys, go check out getviral.com. Go download the, uh, the video marketing plan. Go to the real estate industry page and go download the 24 video topics. That will give you more than enough content. Uh, whether it's for doing emails with viral, whether it's through uh, BombBomb, whether it's through Facebook Live, whatever you guys do, like Frank said, it's all free, but it's the opportunity cost. So seriously, guys, go check out uh, Get Viral. Go check out Viral Marketing. And uh, I mean, obviously, we can't we can't speak highly enough. Greg uses it. That's how I met Greg to begin with. I was his coach at Viral. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's, I, I know firsthand that it works, and I know who it works for. Uh, and essentially, that's what the show is. We're, that's, what the, that's what the Real Estate Uncensored show is. We're executing that plan. Yeah, with that said, guys, thank you so much. Uh, we will be back on Wednesday. We're doing a little bit of uh, Q&A. We've got some amazing guests coming up. We've got Chris Voss, uh, ex-FBI uh, hostage negotiator, is coming yes. on the show. We've got Marcus Davis from cool. Funding. Uh, we've got some kick-butt guests coming up uh, in the very, very near future, guys. So stay tuned, and we'll see you uh, on the next one. Yep. We love you guys. Until then, peace out, ninjas. We go.